Welcome, dear audience, to the American Society of Magical, um, Knees That Grows. Seriously, don't even know if I'm to say the actual film's title, considering I live in the UK. You know, that place where even having the audacity to ask a black lady who's dressed up like she just caught the first boat out of Nigeria where she comes from, can get you bullied so badly by the media that you quit your job after 60 years. Yeah, that country. The place where we've got to reimagine our history to celebrate diversity so much that if we ask what kind of diversity that is, it's a hate crime. Greatest country on earth. But before I begin, I have an announcement to make. The great eye of Big Daddy Mohan is upon this channel, even demonetizing my last two videos so badly that it has left me eating off-brand baked beans. But uh, what did you do to cause this LRCW? Did you play dick or dildo on YouTube with no age restrictions and full monetization so kids can go watch it without any hindrance? Uh, no, literally just said hurty words on the internet. Therefore, to not be nuked from orbit any further, I will now have to censor the hurty words on this platform. But not on Rumble though, you can still say things there. Oh, and they'll also be going up on Patreon too, for my Patreon supporters. Love you guys, thank you for all your support. So let's get on with it audience, let's see what unnecessary racist narrative has been diaried out onto the screen this time. Film beginning, here we are with non-threatening Jerome as an art exhibition, where he is entirely surrounded by white people, who are completely ignoring him as he apologises walking past. Which obviously means it's gonna be a racism, because that's never happened to anyone ever before, with less than 5% of melanin in their skin. So he gets standing by his piece of art that he is exhibiting at this art exhibition, which let's face it, is about as shit as you'd expect from a bunch of rabid cultural race theorists. And as he stands there, a bunch of Wahid people walk past, and they can all see that it's a giant piece of crap, so he completely ignore him. So it was a bad night, no one bought his artwork, and it was made even worse as Lord Karen just told him that his work sucks big time, and he's not invited back again. It's so sad. So he gets walking home on the really racist streets of Los Angeles, which is the exact same place as they brought back segregation at universities, and called it progress. But little does he realise, he's currently being tailed by Tyrone the Broomer. He gets rolling up to an ATM to probably buy some drugs, but he's only got $17 and that ain't gonna buy much fentanyl now, is it? So he walks off all sadly, while a white lady, who is white, goes to use the ATM. But little does she realise she's far too drunk, so asks non-threatening Jerome to give her a hand. And by that, she means passing over her purse while she sorts everything else out. But suddenly, she can't find her bank card because she's so drunk she put it in a machine and then totally forgot about it. So he starts screaming that someone's stolen it, and here comes two white guys, who are also white, accusing the black man of thievery. Fuck me, what genius come up with this shit? Ugh, it's almost like they're trying to send the message right now, but I just cannot work it out. So they all get really big angry, like massively angrily time. But little do they realise, Tyrone the Broomer is coming, and Magic's back her purse into her hands complete with card, so this big uh oh spaghettios is now over, and everyone is friends again. So Tyrone takes Jerome to a bar and starts verbally diarrheaing. Have you noticed the way those white people look at you? Do you not see their white gaze? Um, no, not really, replies Jerome. I don't look at the world through an ideology that was downloaded by the media. But that response just busted Tyrone's nuts, because He's black, so why isn't he hating white people like CNN told him to? And so Tyrone begins his quest to broom Jerome into becoming a racist. And I'm being serious here, that's pretty much the film. Brooming a normal guy who doesn't see race as an issue into a fully blown racist. So Tyrone gets tanning him. Yo dog, I've got something to show you. And then immediately apparates them to the streets outside with magic. Yeah, not impressed at all mate, we all saw that shit done better in Harry Potter. Uh, but Dumbledore, I thought we couldn't apparate from Hogwarts. Do I look like a bitch to you Harry? Anyway, so what are they doing now? Well, they head into a barber's shop where they have an entire ministry of racist magic out the back where Tyrone gets tanning him. Yo dog, this is a recruitment for more magical knees that grow because white people are bad and I want you to join us. So it's potions time with Shaniqua Snape who's explaining the reasons that this entire shit film exists. 
There was a white man once who was playing pool, and a black man turned up saying, Hey, that's some really cool pool you're playing right there. Thanks, says Steve. I used to be the best pool player in the world. But after the war, I got mental problems, and I now I completely suck at it. Ah, uh, okay, he says. Here, let me help you out a little bit. Hopefully, you can regain some of your confidence. Now, usually, you would see that and think, Oh, that's actually really, really sweet. Helping a guy out because he's obviously going through a rough time. But remember, audience, he's white. And the whole reason that exchange just happened was because of the Society of Magical Needs that grow are about placating and reassuring white people so they don't kill black people. Now, Jerome is a little bit unsure about all this racism because it's fundamentally retarded and tells Tyrone, Look, mate. This entire film idea is stupid and is yet another racially divisive piece of media that only pits everyone against each other rather than celebrating what brings us all together. And for that, I ain't having anything to do with it. But that really pisses off Bruma Tyrone, who just cannot take no for an answer, and takes him on a magical ride, telling him, You've got talent, kid. Real talent. And it could do more for black people than a thousand marches ever could. Even that one that literally changed history. And takes him to the magical streets of Los Angeles, where Tyrone hits a fucking home run with this one. Hey, Jerome, what's the most dangerous creature on the planet? Hmm, that's a toughie. I guess that would be black people who listen to race-based media narratives narratives designed to cause societal division, then vote for Democrats because they were promised change, but all that got them was yet more gang violence, single motherhood, crumbling infrastructure, oh, and get told by white liberals that they're too stupid to know what the internet is. What? Oh, uh, sharks. Nope, it's white people, Jerome. Whitey McWhiteface, because when they feel uncomfortable, they do stuff like gentrification, and then shoot black men too. And that's why us magical needs that grow work to placate white people because the more comfortable they are, the less likely they are to kill us to death. Well, says non-threatening Jerome, that's clearly not what the FBI statistics says. So Tyrone, who doesn't take no for an answer, gets showing Jerome a white police officer saying, this cop will probably shoot an unarmed black man in his career because he's evil. And to demonstrate that, as Tyrone walks up to him, the hand moves towards the gun. And then, because because this film is legit racist, a white tear indicator appears showing he's really uncomfortable right now. And that means it's time to placate the dangerous white man by talking about his emotions and what is bothering him. Which he could have done anyway without all this racist narrative. You know, just talk to people doesn't need to have ulterior motives. So because he's having a tough time, Tyrone invites him to an exclusive nightclub later that night to partay. Which will obviously be another reason to inject some stupid race-based narrative into this shit film. When it's night time already because of scene transmission, where Jerome is really getting sick of all this shit, saying, Look mate, seriously, I don't think keeping white people happy is a big deal. I've seen the FBI statistics, it says despite making up just 13% of the population, black- Jesus kid, you can't say that! It'll undo this entire narrative, and we'll probably get this video demonetized. Also, why are you so nice about white people all the time? Um, it's because I'm a nice guy? No, it's because you're scared white people will kill you, aren't you? But my mum's white, I grew up with a lot of people. And I'm sure that didn't mess you up at all. Right. I'm gonna stop right there, that was actually a line from the film. Get the fuck out of here! This film isn't satire like they pretend it is. It is pure narrative by ideological possessed retards. Hmm, what did that guy say again? Just get away. Because there's no fixing this. So Jerome gets ready to queue up for the nightclub because, well, you know, that's why they're here. But as he does, he starts noticing white people all around him. Oh, they're everywhere! And Bruma Tyrone gets right up in his ear saying, I know you can feel their discomfort, all those were hide people whiting around the place. And then comes the cop they invited earlier saying, Oh man, they aren't gonna let me into that club. Look at me, I look stupid in this shirt. Oh, I'm having a bit of a panic attack because I'm white. Now usually you think, okay, this guy needs a bit of help. He's obviously got confidence issues. But remember guys, he's also white. So that means he needs to be racially calmed in case he shoots black people. And Tyrone the racial broomer starts to whisper to Jerome. 
Look at him. Look at his pale ass feelings. Tremendous, mate. Comedic fucking history right there. Oh, he's got nothing on that film Blazing Saddles when the new sheriff walks in and everyone's shot because he's black and then the entire town pull guns on him. So then the sheriff holds himself hostage and suddenly everyone wants to save him again because he's the new sheriff. Oh, that was an excellent racial satire, which was legit most funniest scene I've ever fucking seen. Nah, mate, it was that line right there. Anyway, back to this shit where the white cop man is still having a bit of an utter meltdown. So Jerome goes in to comfort him to reduce those white male tears, saying, Don't worry, bro, we'll get you some spicy mayonnaise sandwiches and a Diet Coke. Everything will be oakily dokily. What a tremendous scene. So let's suddenly head to Jerome passing his Hogwarts owls and receiving a certificate in racism, where Count Blackinock tells all those new recruits, Uh, yeah, since we started this little outfit of white people placators, you know, the society of magical needs that grow, our life expectancy has increased bigly time. Which definitely has nothing to do with white people making incredible advances in medicine that we get to use, because they're not selfish assholes, is because we stopped them going full on clan mode and now we live as long as white non-smokers hurrah they all cheer we can even increase our life expectancy even further by keeping our hands visible when the police officer tells us to so it's the next morning where it's time for jerome to get helping white people like holding a door open so they can all walk out of a coffee shop because if he didn't they would literally nuke the democratic republic of congo he goes in and gets a call on his magical watch where tyrone is like Sup, neighbor. Why aren't you coming to our meeting right now? Oh, sorry, mate, says Jerome. Totally got delayed. I'll be there in a racist minute. But as he stands to leave, he walks right into a female woman. And that busted his nuts because even though he's on a quest to stop racism by being even morely racist, she's actually quite hot. So they get chatting and it's really romantic, even though no one literally cares. But Jerome does, as he sadly has to go to the Society of Magical Needs that's grow right now and get assigned a white male with loads of white tears to play Kate in case he goes full on lynching. Fucking hilarious, mate. The joke was never funny to begin with. So Jerome just straight up gets a job at the same company as Assignment works at. Hmm. But how did that work out? Well, probably through their DEI initiative. And well, there he gets working, talking to Dave, the local clan man, trying to placate those wild genocidal white tendencies. But little does he realize this is the exact same company the woman he met at the coffee shop works for. Oh, what are the chances of that happening? So they all get chatting. But as they do, Dave, the clan man, starts looking a little bit jelly because it's obviously upon studying his white tears dial that he also really wants to lay pipe on Susan, the coffee shop lady too. So what does Jerome get up to? Well, he starts getting close to Susan under the idea that she will reveal ways how to placate Dave, the local clan man, so he doesn't shoot up the local KFC or something. But it was actually Dave himself who spills the baked beans of his male periods, as it turns out that he's Bear Jelly or Susan being better than him. Oh, really interesting plot point. I bet everyone really cared about that one. And seriously, the sudden shift from pure racial trash to romance trash with racial aids is as stupid as Mark Wahlberg starring in The Happening. Well, the Let's completely fuck off all of that and go straight to a random ass breaking news segment where it's reported that the company Jerome now works for are developing AI facial recognition. But it doesn't recognize black people's faces, which means there is a lack of diversity within that company. Jesus man, this film just doesn't stop with the retardation. So with this big auto spaghettios, the CEO starts telling all the employees that they're totally cool. Look guys, we are actually really diverse here. And that means we have to be even more diverse so our product is even better. Alright, alright. So where the f*** did all this come from? Like they're just ejaculating messaging now because they ran out of ideas. Anyway, Dave the local clan man gets running up to Jerome saying, Oh bro, you'll never guess what. Even though we're all over the place with this plot in the movie, I really, really like Susan and I'm going to totally do the sex with her. And that makes Jerome a sad racist because he really, really likes her too and that means he'll have to help the white guy lay pipe on her when it's him he wants to go long dick style. So they'll go for after work drinks where the TV lady man is in the background saying, Ugh! 
Third racist company with the racist face recognition AI thingy are really, really racist because of reasons. Which gets the attention of Susan, who goes to the table saying, Oh, this company that we work for are really bad and do things like release apps where the AI isn't picking up certain melanin levels in people's skin. It's totally a racism. But it turns out that Dave, the local clan man, was actually on the project team that developed the AI facial recognition. So it gets really awkward really fast. Anyone care? Uh, no, literally brought out my fucking mind here. Starting to run on fumes. Therefore, we are going to have to speed this up a little bit. Susan doesn't get a promotion that she wanted because Dave the local clan man did or something. And she got really big mad about that. But Jerome makes her laugh or something. So they go for a romantic walk in a park. Literally, no one cares. But at least they weren't being racist for two fucking seconds. And it's really romantic. So they get moving in for the mouth sex. But just as they're about to make a mouth baby, he's interrupted by a phone call from Dave the clan man saying, Bro, you'll never guess what. I got promoted to Grand Wizard Bigot, which means my hood has got even larger than now. Great, says Tyrone. I'll come back immediately. Not even going to bother laying pipe on Susan. What? Never mind. Love you very much. Bye. So Jerome gets apparating to the Ministry of Black Magic. And as he arrives, a whole load of other magical men appear too. Because Bonquisha has a massive announcement to make. Oh lordy lordy, someone defied the magical society of these that grow. And have violated the code of ethics. So now we've lost all our magic for some kind of reason. Dear lordy, oh lordy, who acted selfishly instead of serving the white person they were assigned to? Well, I can answer that one. It was Latasha who shouted at a white person she was meant to be placating. Oh, the horror. Oh, the shame she must be feeling right now. So Lizzo or Bonquisha, whatever the fuck I just called her earlier, is like, Oh, my sweet apple pie, you can get the fuck out of here and your punishment will be the harshest I can bestow upon you. You will have to live in America as a regular black person. No, she screams. That means I'll have to conform to FBI statistics because despite making up just 13% of the population, black people are... So they get milling around while their magic recharges or something. Literally, no one cares, and they haven't even explained their magic system. They've just spent their time being racist. But it does provide a chance for Tyrone to tell Jerome why he's recruited him into the magical society of white people placators. Ahem. <clears throat> Seeing you walk in a crowd of white people was the most painful thing I have ever dang seen in my life. And that's why I broomed you into becoming a racist. Fucking fantastic, mate. Great scene. So they get talking again later where Tyrone opens up about his backstory to Jerome, saying, Yo, dog, when I was young, Leah, I also really fancied this bitch called Patricia. Damn, she was a fan piece of ass. But she really, really liked a white person who I was assigned to play Kate. So I just did my job and never got to bust my nut. Do you regret it, asked Jerome? Regret? Nah, neighbor. Regret is for white people. Because they are white. Get it? Well, hide people. Oh, they regret things because they have a conscience. Oh, that makes total sense. Yeah, it does. Damn white people watching all around the place. Hey, did I tell you the story about how my dad was also black and used to shine shoes and then one day he was polishing off a white man and that dude literally spat on my dad's head? It was a total racism. Oh, I never forgot about that. And my dad was totally cool about the whole thing because if he got big mad, they would have killed him to death. Oh, and I know you want to lay some pipe on Susan, but forget about it, son. If you screw this job up, you're out of the suit super cool magic group. So because he really wants to be a magical need that grows, it means Jerome has to tell Susan that he's no longer interested in a romantic side quest with her and it's really really sad, still literally no one cares. Alright then, so let's jump to a completely another scene where he's back in bed and Jerome gets a phone call from Dave the local clan man saying, sup neighbor, I have this really big presentation to give today in front of the entire company. So we have to totally meet up. Oh, and I'm going to ask Susan out too because I really want to do the sex with her. And that makes none threatening Jerome big mad because he really wants to lay pipe himself. So he gets running to find Susan so he can tell her that he really wants to do it with her. Oh, very interesting. But as he's trying to find her, Dave the local clan man finds him first saying, yo bro, glad you're here. It's my presentation time. Come help me in it. And don't worry bro, Susan will be there too. That's great replies Jerome, but I don't know if I can really do this. I just want to go. But you have to do it, says Dave the local clan man. You're here because of our diversity drive. 
They have to see what we're achieving here. What the f*** are you talking about, Ask Jerome? You know, the whole AI spatial recognition, auto spaghettios that was randomly inserted into the film ages ago? You know, where it couldn't recognize black people? Well, we need to show everyone that we have diversity in the company. So Dave walks off onto the stage ready to ejaculate a bunch of DEI messaging. But that really busted non-threatening Jerome's nuts, causing him to walk up to Dave telling him, Hey bigot, I'm not just a skin cutter to be paraded around as a pet bingo card. I am a human being, and now also I'm racist. I've had it with you white people. I just want to live in a country where I won't get murdered to death because of my race and then have the media explain it away like it was my fault. Alright, just keep your hands on the steering wheel and nothing can go wrong. Well, that's f***ed everything up so he gets summoned by Hogwarts where Lizzo gets raging. Oh lordy lordy, you dang goofed up. Why did you just start yelling at your allocated white person to play Kate? It's because I spent my entire life making white people feel comfortable. I will do it no longer. All right, fine. So you're fired then, Jerome. Great. So he goes running up to Susan, does the mouth sex, and that's basically it. Get the fuck out of here. Film finished. And well, that was certainly something else. It's an odd decade to be alive in when you could literally release a full-on racist film disguised under the banner of comedy, even though everyone knows it's illogical narrative, but as soon as you start quoting FBI statistics, everyone loses their shit. Well, as they say, it's either all okay or none of it's okay, so there is no in-between. Big shout out to my Patreon boys and goys. The list is getting even bigglier now, so a massive thank you for all of your support. It's what gets me out of bed at the crack of noon. Love you all very much, Bigly. Subscribe button. Is always right.